All right. I think we're ready. We're cooking chicken today. Bone in, skin on thighs. We're going to take the bones out of these, pickle some onions for a salad, butter lettuce, and make a little ranch dressing. Little baby peppers there. Should be a fairly easy, quick lunch. We have already uh, taken some bacon in a nonstick pan, rendered it really, really slowly. We're going to take the onions. Uh, add a little water to the pan, salt, sugar, just a really quick pickle for them. Pretty good amount of salt, I'd say one tablespoon. About two cups of water, then we'll put a splash of just white vinegar in there. Two tablespoons of white vinegar, and then just a touch of sugar. <laughs> Don't tell my girlfriend that we're putting peppercorns in there. You hear? Is that two? Mm -hmm. Okay, she hates peppercorns, and she heard me, so we're not putting peppercorns in there. I was gonna put them whole. Okay, she doesn't like them whole, so no peppercorns. But I'm glad that we found that because we are out of pepper. So uh, we're just gonna take that and literally bring that to the most rapid boil we can. I can fill the pepper. Uh, my lovely girlfriend is going to fill the pepper grinder. Um, so we're just bringing this to a boil, then we're going to take the onions, turn the heat off, throw the onions in as it's boiling, let the heat reduce in the pan, and the idea there is that they just gently pickle themselves. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the bones out of all these thighs. It is pretty easy to do. Um, it can be done in... You know, just a couple minutes, honestly. It's really not that hard to do. So, let's get going on that. I like a good sharp carving knife for it, or uh, if you have a really good paring knife, the paring knife works as well. So we got all our thighs. As you can see here, this is where the bone runs, right there. And the idea is that we're just going to cut that out while we leave the meat and skin intact as much as we can. Um, so we're literally just going to run a knife there, there, and then right on the back we'll disconnect it right through there. So we're just making cuts along the side of the bone, following the bone. Do the same thing on this side. So you can kind of pull it up and there's a little bit of space. Cut that out. And then we're just going to take and follow the bone down to the joint.
And again, you see the skin totally intact. That's the goal. And when you get it here, hand down, bone away. So ideally what we're doing is cutting this out, that little area. We're just going to follow the bone. And there we go. Now you can take that, save that for stock, soups, whatever. We keep a bag in the freezer for those things. And then for this, there's just this little tail of extra fat. I'm just going to cut that off. And the first one's done. So, as you saw, pretty easy. And then as you come across it, if you feel any extra cartilage, or anything on the bottom of the chicken, you obviously want to take that off. It's a little tough piece. So just run down. Underneath. Pull back. Done. Second one done. Third one's done, and water's coming pretty rapidly to the boil over here. So once that gets nice and hot, we'll take it off once it's come to a full boil. And we're done. So, quick rinse of the hands. I always like to give this pot a quick stir just to make sure all the uh, <clears throat> all the salt and sugar is mixed in properly. Gotta get my good spoon. So, turn the heat off. Onions in, lid on, and just move it to a cold burner. So for the chicken pieces, like I said, we're going to put them in our bag.
This is what we keep in the freezer. We just made some stocks. That's why there's not much left. I'm going to put our bacon back on, heat it through, get a little more of that fat rendered out real quick. Try to take some of the heat out of the burner. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and do a ranch dressing today. I love ranch dressing, personally. So we take just a fresh clove of garlic, grater, cheese grater works perfectly. We found that grating the garlic kind of tempers it a little bit so it's not so aggressive. It's still got some bite to it, but not anywhere near the same as if we were to to just chop or mince the garlic in there. So, garlic in the bottom of the bowl. This is what she does. I don't know why she does this. <laughs> she leaves the, uh, the lid on the sour cream. Then I come across it and I take it off. <laughs> It's funny though, because the sour cream we used to get, say on the packaging, take the lid off because it'll make it last longer. Mm -hmm. That's not even why I like to do it. I like to do it just because it looks better. It drives my weird brain insane if I. Yeah, my daughter unfortunately got the same weird brain as me. About one tablespoon of sour cream. About a half a tablespoon of mayonnaise. A little bit of fresh ground pepper. A good pinch of salt. I like cheese in my dressing, so we're going to put a little Parmesan cheese in there. Huh? What are you, what are you complaining about? Right? <laughs> And we always use um, fresh grated Parmesan, not the craft stuff. It tastes better, it's really not that expensive. Unless you're us and you use it for everything. Mm -hmm. and you know it's the good stuff. You can literally see on the outside.
So we'll give that a good mix. Now obviously not everyone's going to want their dressing this kind of thick. I don't want my dressing this thick either. You have a couple options. One of them is buttermilk. Buttermilk works really nice in here. Uh, we don't have any buttermilk. So I'm just going to put a splash of water in there. Apparently we do vinegar in our ranch dressing. I didn't know that. I usually do. Usually white vinegar. White vinegar. <laughs> yeah. Huh? You have to remember though that boiled water come down in temperature a little bit. Yeah. So that's a good consistency. Nice, rich, thick. We'll taste it, make sure we like it. I get the seal of approval over here. Mm. You could use a touch of spice for my palate. It needs a little salt. Mm -hmm. You can put the garlic powder? Mm-mm. You can put any powder? Nope. You need this? You do. Okay. Yeah, a little good. garlic powder, a little bit of cayenne, and a little bit of onion powder. Yes, it's better. Um, and again, it's garlic powder, not garlic salt. Tastes good to me. Tastes good. Mm. So, sour cream back, mayonnaise back. Clean up after yourself. What do they do to the <laughs> so, pan on. I like to start really, really low heat. So in our case, our um, oven goes up to our stove goes up to ten. I got it at three. Uh, we're doing it in that same bacon fat. I added just a touch of avocado oil, just the neutral oil. We'll take our chicken, lay our chicken out. Um, I've been seasoning with just salt because we want to enhance the flavor. We don't really want to add the pepper flavor and we don't want the pepper to burn either. So, good amount of salt per side. If you notice again, one hand Seasoning, one hand flipping. That way I don't get a bunch of salt stuck in my hands. And it might look like a lot of salt, but the second it hits the pan, we're going to lose about 30-ish 30, 30 percent of the salt. So, chicken in. And it might look a little crowded to start, but these are going to seize up quite a bit once the heat gets going. I'm just going to let those go, and you'll see they'll really gently come up in temperature. Onion smell really, really good. And the bacon tastes really good.
like to baste my protein and butter after I flip it. A little bit of time for the chicken. So you can see, really, really gentle cooking. I'll be right back. It looks like the stream is lagging really bad. All right, we're back. Should be a little bit better. So, nothing has drastically changed. The temperature is really, really gradually coming up in the pan over here. Heads of butter lettuce, scarlet butter, and just regular butter lettuce. <clears throat> and take the ends off of those. I'd like to point out the lovely uh, shirt over the here. Sweatshirt. <clears throat> it's a T-Rex sweatshirt. That she likes to steal. Well, she made fun of me. She made fun of me when I first got it. And it's a little goofy for you. you now she's the one that wears it most of the time. I'm gonna come get you. Picks me up from work at night in it.
So yeah, you can hear the chicken bubbling away. I like to give it a peek every couple minutes. And you can see, it's pretty much white right now. The idea behind this method though is that if we gently bring the heat in the pan, the chicken will slowly render all the fat out of the skin so that you'll be left with a really crispy skin as opposed to that kind of gooey, rubbery almost skin. I really prefer the, the super crispy skin, so that's what we like to do. It does take a little bit longer. I mean, you could throw this in there, cook it four minutes aside on really, really high, and it would be done. To me, it's worth the extra time. But, you know, if you don't have a ton of time, I don't know. All right, so I think we're at the point where we're going to turn the heat up just like one step. So on my stove, we're going from three to four. It's a very gradual increase in heat, but it does um, begin to cook the chicken a little bit more than, than it was before. We're doing it in a nonstick pan. You don't have to do a nonstick pan. The only reason I did it, we cooked bacon last night in a nonstick. It was already bacon fat, so I put more bacon fat in there. Cooked a little bacon. So hopefully the chicken takes on a little bit of that smoky, savory quality. You can hear the chicken bubbling a little more aggressively now, which is what we wanted. We can give our onions a taste and see if we like how they turned out. See how soft and translucent they are. It's a pickled onion. You want to try one, baby? Uh, huh?
I'm going to put them in a container, put them in the fridge. No one wants a warm pickled onion on their salad. So we'll just pop them in the freezer for a minute. If there's room, there might not be room. There's room. My girlfriend just showed me a recipe for guacamole stuffed burgers. Sounds like one of the worst ideas ever. Who wants warm guacamole? Yeah, warm guacamole in the middle of a burger. So the chicken might tend to curl up a little bit as you cook it, so I just take and press down on the area. And the way you'll know it's happening. If you look there, you can see how white that is in the middle. It's white because it's not making contact with the pan, so you just take and press down, and you'll hear it bubble. Now he's waiting on a, uh, a gift card for uh, going and getting a physical. And it's been like, what, two weeks? Before Christmas. It's been over a month. It's been over a month since they were supposed to send it. Alright, so now the chicken is getting close color-wise, so I turn it up just one more notch, just to get that last little bit of color that we're looking for on there. And you'll hear, I mean, you can already kind of hear the, the bubbles are getting a little more aggressive, a little more rapid.
And if you, you actually look at the chicken, you can see the white is climbing up the chicken, which is an indicator of like how far along the chicken is in terms of cooking. So usually when it makes it about halfway through from the bottom side, is when I start to think about flipping them over. Some of the pieces might finish before the others in terms of skin, so we'll just put those before. This guy, in my book, is pretty much perfect, so we're going to go ahead and flip him. Let me just remember, he needs to be the first one that comes back out of the pan. And you can see how much fat I'm taking out of this pan. This is fat that would have been in the chicken. I'm going to let that guy chill for a minute. So these are all getting really, really close. So now we're going to go ahead and turn the heat down just a little bit, back down to four. Flip our chicken over. Now to get the heat out of the pan, a little bit of butter in there. How's that butter melt? A little bit of fresh thyme. Thyme is going to pop when you put it in, so I always make it somewhere towards the back of the pan. Now we're just going to take this bacon fat, butter, chicken fat, and oil mixture. Just spoon it over the chicken.
I'm just gonna let that finish cooking. Should be five, ten minutes, not even, maybe two minutes. And this chicken should be good. Mm. That is pretty much it. We are going to go eat. My daughter's getting turkey. So, thanks for watching, guys.